our heads for a quick prayer before we start our heavenly father lord we thank you we praise you we glorify you thank you for this blessed day we ask that you fill us lord always with your holy spirit when we come to your presence and let your presence be the desire of our hearts lord and let your holy spirit be our guide our teacher our counselor lord at all times we ask that you uh, become the one who is speaking to all of us uh, this morning. Pray this name for our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, through intercession, Holy Mother, St. Mary, St. Mark, all your saints. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Um, today we have something fun for you, and it's not going to be as deep and as um, complicated as the two times before. But it's uh, very, very important and very, very interesting. And it, um, if you take it serious and really learn what we're going to talk about today, it might be a life-changing uh, for your relationships. Okay? It might be an eye-opener how to deal with different kinds of people and how, how to read people. How to read people. Like when, when you meet someone, how to figure out in the first five minutes what kind of personality this person is and what's the best way to, uh, to connect with this person, okay? Um, before we, we get in there, I wanted to, uh, to answer a question that came last Sunday about the gut level uh, uh, interaction or connection in relationships. And the question was, should I have this kind of relationship with anyone or everyone? Absolutely not. This is just for uh, close people and close friends. But the close people and the clo close friends cannot be just one person or two or three. You know, so let's say, you know, around like, if I tell you what are the five closest people to you, you can give me five names that you have um, got level connection. If you don't understand anything I'm talking about now, don't worry, it's answering question about last uh, Sunday talk. So let's get now to um, the fun. We said that um, psychological maturity is basically knowing yourself. Knowing yourself. And one part of knowing yourself is knowing your personality. What kind of personality you have? Are you a fun person? Are you a serious person? Are you an introvert, extrovert? Like, what is your personality? Okay, how do you, what, what do you say about yourself? How are people around you? And are they different than you or not? What I'm gonna say is gonna be helpful for, of course, everyone. That's gonna be crucially important for parents or those who uh, are in a process or you know, they're not married yet because it's very, very important to understand personalities and, and how we work together. One thing you need to know is you are born with your personality. You're born with your personality and that does not change. Okay? It does not change. You can adapt, but it cannot change. For example, like myself, and I'm part of what I'm going to tell you is I'm going to actually reveal to you my personality which is supposed to be something very private, but, you know, since we're talking about opening up and sharing, and I'm going to let you ev know everything. But part of my personality is that I'm a very shy person, okay? I used to be very shy. I used to, you know, be intimidated of saying hi to people, okay? But I was chosen to be a priest, and I had to deal with a lot of people. So I adapted that a little bit, you know, even you could, you could tell that I'm an extrovert, and I'm 100% introvert, 100%. If you lock me in a room for a week, I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to get out. I'll be very, very, very happy and content. Um, but, you know, you see me, I'm a people person. You're, you know, you're fooled. Um, it's the personality you're born with. It. You, could, you could adapt with this, but you cannot really change your personality. How many numbers of personality in the world? Numerous. Why? Because it's exactly like colors, okay? 
there are numerous number of colors, but the basic number of colors, they're limited, you know? So personality the same. There are four main kinds of personalities that we're going to explain today. And everyone has a color, but because our beautiful projector is, is not working well, this is supposed to be red. Can you imagine that this is red? Okay, this is red. And this is actually green, okay? So if you mix these colors, you can't say I'm one of those personalities, but could be mixed. I could be 70 of those and 20 and 10 here and 10 there. You know, mix these colors together. These four colors are the dominant, the influential, the steady, the cautious. These are the four main personalities. We're going to explain these personalities now. And maybe another time, we're going actually to get a little bit deeper and tell you four characters in the Bible from these personalities, okay? St. Paul was the dominant one. St. Peter was the influential. Abraham was the steady. And Moses was the cautious one. It's very, very interesting how even God deal with us according to our personality. For example, Abraham was a steady. He's a family person. When God asked him for a trial, he told him, leave your family. And that was a big deal because Abraham is a family guy. Okay? When he tested him, really, he said, offer your son as a sacrifice. St. Paul, if you tell him, offer all your family as sacrifices, he would slay all of them, and he wouldn't have a, a drop of tear. He's very solid. He's dominant personality. He's a strong personality. He doesn't care about these things. We're going to learn about these personalities, and they're fun. But before we learn, we want to agree on three things, okay? Number one, there's no good personality or bad personality, okay? You can't say, oh, St. Paul is better than Abraham. You can never do that. You can never say red is better than yellow. I think black is better than all of them, okay? I prefer, it's my favorite color, and, you know, it's a nice color, right? It's, you know, it's only for the elegant people, the smart people. Yeah, judges, they wear black, right? Doctors is a different story. Uh, you can't say there's a good color and a bad color, right? Same thing like personality. Please look at it this way. Please look at it this way. Because when we, when we speak, we're going to show the weaknesses of every personality. And if you're a D, you're going to say, now everybody's going to hate me because they know who I really am. No, let's just, you know, uh, rest sure that you know, that's not going to happen. So no good personality or bad personality. We're different. And I think if you understand that, it's going to help you a lot in all your relationships. Some people think that they have a good kid and a bad kid. No. <laughs> they have two different kids with two different personalities. Okay? And so on. So that's number one. Number two. Every personality has its weaknesses and its strength. When you learn your strength, what are you going to do with it? Two things. You're going to thank God for it, and you're going to maximize your strength, meaning do a lot of the things that you do good. Okay? That's what we learn. We thank God for that. How about your weaknesses? What do you do? Do you also give thanks to God or trust God that, you know, he created that for a reason? And not only that, I should work on my weaknesses. For example, if you're a D, who's a dominant, who's not a people person by any means, if you're, if you're that, don't say, that's me, I'm a D. Nobody talks to me, I'm the boss. No, ease up and learn how to accommodate other people and how to learn other people, how to read other people, and so on. Uh, so the weaknesses and the strength. So no good personality or bad personality. The second is every personality has strength and weakness. Number three, which is the most important, and most important thing we're going to say today. Never judge anyone. Oh, he's an I. I know. These, all these eyes, they're irresponsible. Never say that, please. Okay? Because you have your own weaknesses too. Okay. The first group we're going to split is 
Some people are outgoing and some people are reserved. What's outgoing of reserved? So we're still going to talk about the four. But before the four split into two. Reserved or outgoing? What's outgoing? Outgoing people, people who are wake up in the morning happy about anything in life. That they're alive today and the weather is good and life is good. They love people. They love to talk to people. And they can talk about anything, about anything. If you tell them to read, you know, the, the phone book is going to be a fun exercise to do. They're the fun people, okay? The reserved people, okay, when you tell them good morning, they're not going to tell you, oh, hi, how are you? How's family? And they're not going to be very excited, but they're going to tell you, hi, how are you? Did you listen to the State of the Union? Ah, uh, yeah, I know. So it's like even when you say hi to people, you can tell the difference, okay, between that. So very quickly, uh, and this is in your outline, you have actually two sheets of paper in your outline, okay? So one of them is going to have this. So if you want to write these things down, they are fast-paced, the outgoing people. They talk a lot and they talk fast, okay? And their rhythm of life is just, you know, they're fast. Okay, they're optimistic, you know, life is good, everything's going to be okay, and they're happy, happy people by nature. Don't look at these people and say, see, these people are grateful and thankful. Wait a little bit, okay, they're just, they're born that way, okay, they're born that, they're born happy. Energetic, involved, you know, if, if you ask for volunteers, make no mistake about it, anyone is going to raise his hand, is going to be an outgoing person. Reserve people, we're going to talk about them a little bit. They're enthusiastic and so on. The reserved people, they're a little bit slower paced, so walk slowly or else you're going to get a heart attack. Okay, take it easy. They're cautious. Measure twice before we cut or else we have to glue it after you ruined it. They're cautious slower, they're concerned, they're reluctant, they're discerning, they're critical thinking. Now let me ask a question. Which one is better? Which one is better? No one is better. You know why? Because God created us that way. Okay? Two children Born in the same household, same parents, same genes, same everything. One is very happy, doesn't care about anything in life other than just joking and making fun and breaking everyone's toys and breaking everything in the house because it doesn't matter. We just have to have fun. Another one breaks all his toys, of course. Other one is very conservative keeping his toys until his other brother come and destroy his toys, and then he's destroyed from inside. Why? Because he keeps his stuff, he keeps his toys, he keeps things clean and organized. You can tell that you're... See, learn from your brother. He's organized. Well, can his, he learn to be happy and not to be sad and not to be dramatic about everything from his brother? You get what I'm trying to say? And so on. You see these people at home, at work, everywhere, um, and, and, and you need to, to, to learn how people, you know, uh, act, and, and you can tell. Outgoing people need to understand when you see reserved people to slow down a little bit with them and not to be, you know, not to be rough on them or you know, or, or push them. And reserved people need to pick up the pace a little bit when they are with people who are outgoing or else they're going to drive them crazy. That's the first category. The other is people are either task-oriented or people-oriented. Task-oriented or people-oriented. What does that mean? Task-oriented people, they have tasks, goals, very, very organized, and they like forms, systems, and people 
oriented group they just like to have relationships rather than systems so we go quickly about the task oriented people you will find them that they like forms standards you know function um, how does this function programs do you work only with programs and, and, and organize things and have to have clear plans and put everything in projects? They have to have procedures and follow procedures. Do you follow procedures, systems, stuff like this? The people oriented, they're into relationships. Come on, people are more important than programs. Who cares about programs? Who cares about plans? Let's care for people, you know? They're also caring people, they're sharing, they're emotional. They would cry even at the grand opening of a Dairy Queen because they're very emotional. You know, it's just an emotional thing. The feelings, the friendship, you understand what I'm talking about? Emotional people. Which one is better? These people don't have heart, but they have brains. <laughs> These people have heart. I'm, I'm one of them. So, <laughs> you know. Well, we have a mix of all of these things together. 90% of the conflicts in the world happens because of that. Because we, un we don't understand people and how they function. For example, task-oriented mom is sitting with her daughter to do the homework. The daughter is people-oriented. The mom is task-oriented. So mom sits at the table. We need to get the homework done. We have a task to do. The girl, she's happy because it's time with mom. It's time with mom. So mom needs to get the task done. And the girl wants, like, let's get milk and cookies and, you know, Enjoy our time while we're doing the homework. What's wrong with you? We have homework. We have to finish the homework. And she yells, and the daughter thinks that she, her mother is an alien, and, and all this. What's wrong? I'm just, I want time with mom. And so on. So you understand how these things work. Even some people who come to church, some of you are task-oriented. Tell me, these, the scale is hand out. We need to fill this out. And God forbid if they forget one of the lines or the fill out, they forget this. They go everywhere to see this and fill it out because they need to have their handout full, task oriented. They finish. Now we need to go. We need to leave. We have stuff to do. Well, and maybe the partner is a people person. Oh, let's enjoy people. Let's have. Fun. Are we coming to church to enjoy people? We're coming for God. Love God or love people or, or what? You know what I mean? This is right. This is right. No one is wrong, but we're just different. Not only that we're different, but God created us different. God created us different and differently, and you will see why. If all people are task-oriented, we'll, we're going to become machines. Human beings will be machines. Every country will be China. If we're people-oriented, then it's going to be a big party. We're going to be one of these countries in Europe where they don't do absolutely anything other than to just enjoy and have fun and, you know, from one club to another place. And, you know, we're never going to get anything done. We need China. We need Europe. We need all these countries together. No one is better than anyone. But we're different, and we need each other. Okay? So now I told you the upper ones are the outgoing. The lower ones are the reserved. The right ones are the people. The left are the tasks. So in this mix, will you find someone who's outgoing and task-oriented? That's a D, the dominant. If someone is outgoing and people, 
that's going to be an I. Influential. We're going to talk about this. When you see someone who's reserved and task oriented, it's going to be a C or cautious. And the steady is the combination of people oriented and reserved. Okay? If we want to take one after the other, so very, very quickly, we're going to go through them. The D is the dominant, the leader, the one in a charge. Okay? They're dominant, they're direct, they're demanding, they're decisive, they're determined, they're doers. They get things done. Get things done. The I. The influential, the inspiring, the people, the loving, the friendship, they're impressionable, they're interactive, impressive, they're interested in people, 100% people. The S is the people-oriented, the caring person who makes sure that we get along, that everybody's happy, no one is sad, no one is, you know, is hurt or anything like this. They're the nicest one of them, and you'll know later on why I'm saying that. Okay, they're supportive, they're stable, they're steady, sweet, status quo, and they're shy. And the C, they are the task. These are the scientists. These are the people who are very organized, who go by the rules, very cautious. You know, most of, of, of the doctors are C. When you choose a doctor, you don't choose a doctor who's going to tell you jokes, right? You don't choose an eye doctor who's going to have fun and tell you jokes and be very friendly with you. You need someone who's really accurate, who knows what he's doing, or else you're going to be in trouble. You know what I mean? You need the I. We need the C for the planning committee. But if you put them in the greeting committee, nobody's going to ever come to church. When people come inside the church, uh, what's your name exactly? Can you spell your name? Versus the eye. Hey, it's good to see you. Regardless if he's a member in the church or he's the, the janitor of the church, it doesn't matter. You know, they're happy. They love everyone. Okay, everyone has, you know, has a role to do. The cautious, the calculating, the competent, conscientious, the uh, contemplative, and the careful. We're going to take every one of them quickly and pass through them. Again, no one is better than the other. You have a question? Email it or text it to LLS. <laughs> Before we get there, actually, let's get back to this. If you're doing a surgery, you need a C doctor. Okay? When you go to a Super Bowl party, you need an I. He's happy, he's fun, you know, they they like they don't like party, they are the party, you know what I mean? So everyone, you know, has a, a reason. Let's talk about the D. Before we talk about the D. The reason why we're, lear we're learning this is because we want to learn how to communicate with people. When you speak to a dominant person, it's different than the way you speak to an influential person. When you speak to a steady person, it's different than when you speak to a cautious person. Proverbs 18.21 says, Life and death are in the power of your words. Life and death are in the power of your words. Like, when you talk to people, you give them life with your words. For example, if you see, if you have an eye child, if you have an eye child, what do you tell him? You're doing great in your homework. Wonderful job. I'm so proud of you. I can't believe how much you're growing and how much you're you know, you're an amazing person. When you talk to an I person, you have to encourage and say a lot of words. If you say that to a D, he's going to look at you and say, Thanks. Like, what's, wrong? what's wrong with you? <laughs> you know, keep it quiet. So, one, you have to say a lot of things, and one, good job, buddy, next. You know what I mean? 
That's how you talk to them. So some people, if you link, if you if you speak, you know, over a minute with D without exactly saying what you want, you're gonna pick up a fight. Tell me exactly, like what's the end? What's what's the end result? So we're learning that to learn how to communicate and deal with with different people. And not only that, I'm gonna tell you later on, but I'm not a D. Like the D is very low, like you're gonna see in my chart is like 10% or something. But God put me in charge of a big church. I have to be a leader. So even though my natural D is like this, but I had to develop it a little bit to be like this, or else there's no leadership in the church. And, 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 and we suffer actually from that. You know, I'll tell you later on how we suffer, from, or how I suffer from that. And people around me suffer from that. I have to add a little bit more of the D to my personality. Adapt. And actually, not only that I adapt, even God will put me in a situation that I need to adapt. So I, so I, I love everyone, and I give excuse to everyone, and I care for everyone, and so on. That's why we're learning what we're learning. D, the dominant personality. They are the dominant, the boss, the demanding, the direct, the dynamic, you know. If you tell a D, you know, let me help you. I don't think you, you know what you're doing. Oh my goodness. You just start the fight. I'm the boss here. I know what I'm doing. Let's just get it done. They're determined. You can never, they, will, they will never give up. They're decisive. They make decisions very, very quickly. They're the directors. You know, they're the coaches. They're the leaders, stuff like this. If you're a boss and you have someone who is high D under you, good luck. Or if you're a parent, and one of your children are D, you need to learn how to talk to them. Like, for example, you know, if you have a D child, you can't tell the child, it's time, it's a bedtime, just get upstairs right now. Oh my goodness. What? I'm not going. Why? Because I'm the boss. So how, how do you talk to your kid who's a D? You can say, well, you know, you decide whenever you want to go upstairs, but I think 9 o'clock is the limit. Is that a deal? Is that sounds good? Okay, fine. And that's it. Short answers. Tell me exactly what you want, and I'm going to do it my way. Okay. You want to pick up the toys? You want to do it before dinner or after dinner? You're the boss. It's your choice. You know what I mean? You can say, you pick up the toys right now. You're going to get in trouble. They don't hear it that way. They hear it, you want to fight? You know? That's how they hear it. They're loud, you know? If you go with a D who's driving, first of all, they can never be in the passenger seat. They hate the passenger seat. They like to be behind the wheels. And if you're going with them in a long trip, you better go to the bathroom before you leave. Because they're never going to stop. We have a task. We have something. We need to get it done. We need to arrive at that time. We're going to be late. They have great things, but the worst thing is that they're defiant. Okay? It's my way or the highway, or nobody tells me what to do. They're born like this. Let me give an example. Five years old child driving to his first soccer practice first time ever to practice soccer he asked mommy mommy who's the most important one in the team mommy doesn't know anything about soccer so she said i think the goalie he said i want to be a goalie he never he never touched the soccer ball before i want to be a goalie and then his sister said no you can't just be a goalie like the coach has to assign you to anywhere he wants and then he said, what's the coach? And then, you know, mom said, he's the person who manages everything. 
Is it, can I be the coach? They're born this way. The, the percentage of population is 10%. They're the lowest percentage of all personalities. Thank God we have only 10%. We're just happy with this. We don't want to add more. Example from the Bible. Not a lot of characters in the Bible actually do, except St. Paul. And we're going to talk about him next time. You're going to see St. Paul. He's, you know, he, you started hearing about him when, he's, when he killed St. Stephen. You know, that's his beginning. Like he, you know, he was killing, and his hobby was like killing people. So, but of course, after transformation, he's completely a different person. D doesn't have to be male or female, old or young. It doesn't really matter. People are born that way. Their basic needs is they need a challenge, they need choices, they need control. You give them the control, everybody's going to be happy. You know, you control them, you know, it's not going to be good. So we need to speak to them their language. The I personality, the happy people, the friendly people. If you're an I, can you raise your hand? Yes. Not a lot of I. Are you shy? You shouldn't be shy. You should be saying, yes, it's me. Yeah. Finally, someone understands us. It's okay. Maybe not a lot of I. <laughs> They're the inspiring people, the influencing people. They're the marketing people. They're the... Um, they, they like to promote things. They're... Um, they're impressive, they're interesting, they're impressionable. Like they go to the dentist, like if, if there's a kid, he goes to the dentist, I want to be a dentist. You know, he goes to, you know, the, the, the soccer practice, I want to be a coach. He wants, you know, he visits like a restaurant, the best restaurant in the whole wide world. You know, they're impressionable. Like everything is, is very good, everything is amazing, and life is really good, you know, um, even if it's not. They're interested in people. They're interested in people. One person had a girl in her teenage years, and she um, misbehaved. I, I, I don't know what she did. So the punishment was to take her cell phone for three days. She was a high eye. A cell phone for three days. She came the following day to her dad, and she said, Dad, you think you can spank me? You know, she's like a teenager. Spank you, why? She said, you know, because of what I did and stuff. I can't live without the phone. I'm dying. <laughs> I need, give me any other punishment, but don't take the phone. You can't. If you do this, then you're killing them. You know, they need to talk all the time. Okay? Two eyes may have a problem being friends. Because they can't be talking all the time at the same time, all the time. You know what I mean? They need someone to talk, someone to listen, you know. Someone to make sense and someone doesn't. But, you know, they're interested in people. They're imaginative. <clears throat> they're dreamers. They're impulsive. You know, they do first and then think. Like They, they talk first, you know. And if, if you can tell from the Bible, St. Peter... He would always have something to say about anything. Even if Jesus is transfigured on the mountain, he wants to talk about it. He said, um, can we get like tabernacles? Can we do something? Can we talk about it? Can I say something? I'm here. <laughs> can anyone recognize me, please? God bless them. Uh, but the problem is that they're illogical and sometimes inconsistent. They talk a lot and they do less versus the D. They do, you know, before they talk or without talking. The percent of the population of this is 25 to 30 percent. God wants us to be happy, so he, he sends us more, more of those. Uh, and the example from the Bible is St. Peter, of course. He talks all the time. He always has something to say. He's impulsive. You know, and, 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 and at the same time, they're good at, you know, um, motivating people as he spoke, you know, on the sermon on the day of Pentecost. 
basic needs, they need recognition and approval. Like me, please like me, like me. I hope you like me. S personality, the supportive. They're the supportive, they're, they care for people by nature. You know, they're steady, they don't like to change. They're stable, they're secure. If you arrange their office, you need to give them three years notice or else they're going to be mad at you. They're sweet, they're secure, they're, you know, they like to serve. They're submissive, they're shy, you know. They, they make sure that people get along. But there are problems that, you know, again, as every personality has a weakness, they're pre they're, they're suckers, they, you know. They cannot say no. Is the word that they cannot say. They, they don't know how to say no. They're nice people. We have examples from the Bible. They're 30 to 35 percent. Examples from the Bible. Abraham is the father of all nations. St. John, beloved, is definitely one of them. Mother Teresa uh, is also one of them. Their basic needs is appreciation and security. Appreciation and security. If you have a D child and an S child, would you deal with them the same way? D can walk over people. And this can barely talk to people, you know, want to make sure that people are okay, doesn't want to hurt people. D doesn't care about people whatsoever, and he just needs, he, he wants to get things done. Can never deal with, you can never punish them in the same way. Same thing when you're dealing with people. Some people are ta very, very task oriented, like very determined, and some people just want to please you. You don't say the S is nice, thank God, I, you know, why he can't be like this? When we compare people, can never compare a D with an S. This is a personality. This is another personality, and we need both. What works with me is a different story. We may talk about it next time. We may talk about what works be best. If you're an S, what works best with S? When you deal with D, what do you do? Because they're hurtful people. You know, they're cruel. You know, what do you do with them? They're going to hurt you a lot. You know, maybe understanding that is, you know, and, and, and learning some tips is going to help a lot with this aspect. See the cautious, they're the scientists, they're the smart people, the cautious people, they're competent, life, love competition, they're cognitive, they're careful, you know, when they make a photocopy, they have to read proof it, you know, proofread the, 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 the Xerox copy, because they want to make sure that everything is right, they calculate everything, they go by the rules, critical thinking, detail oriented, you know, they com they're compli they, they comply by the, by the rules and the regulations. They're correct. Not because they're correct, but they think they're correct. All the time. Okay? And they're consistent. If you tell a C, let's meet 8 o'clock in the morning, 7.30 is going to be there. If you tell an I... 8 o'clock in the morning means nothing. Why? Because they have to pass by Starbucks and stand on the line and talk to the lovely people in the line and, you know, get some drinks for, you know, the trip because, you know, it, it, it's fun. C was an I. <sighs> okay. Their problem that they're cold. They're cold. You need to ease up a little bit. You need to go to the bathroom and practice how to smile. And, you know, they learn. You know, they're smart so they can learn. Um, percentage of population is 20 to 25 percent. Moses, the prophet, is one of them. Thomas, the apostle. I need to put my hand in the side of Christ. And Bill Gates. I heard that he dropped out of Harvard because he had better ideas. 
better education than Harvard, smart people, they need quality answers and values. Let me give you some examples to put these in practice. If you want to build a, if we want to build a bridge, okay, how the four personalities deal with the building the bridge? Let's start with the D. D, let's start working. Regardless if we have a plan or we don't have a plan, regardless of safety, they can kill people, they can destroy things. Let's get it done fast. And you're going to find the bridge being done in 45 days, losing a lot of people, losing a lot of things, but the bridge is going to be done. Okay? I, people, we're building a bridge. Let's have a party. Let's have a fundraising event. Let's talk about it. Let's promote this. Let's talk to everybody about it. You know, two years later, nothing happens. Okay? The S, if... Yeah, the S. We're building a bridge. Okay, but I hope this bridge is not going to hurt anyone. Like, is everybody okay? And, you know, we want to make sure that the workers, they get along, okay? And everybody's happy and nobody's sad and stuff like this. Uh, and by the time they, they do the bridge, of course, you know, everybody is going to be happy, but, you know, it's going to happen also after a very long time. The C is going to take two years to plan first before they touch anything. And let's have drawings. Let's have budget. Without budget, you can do anything. Have specific detailed drawing, you know, and so on. You know the difference now? Give you another story. Okay, different personalities going to Walmart. Start with the D. Park his car closest to the store. He can damage other cars while he's doing that. You know, can you know? careless of people walking or doing anything, he goes straight forward to the place and, you know, maybe pushes some carts and people and stuff like this, get things done, doesn't look at anything else, take it, check out, five minutes is out, mission accomplished. I people go to Walmart, park their car, they get inside, they meet a friend, Oh, they just opened a McDonald's here in Walmart. Why don't we just go and take lunch? Yeah, let's have fun, have lunch. They go have lunch, have nice time, go home, forgot what they even went to Walmart to get, you know. Doesn't matter. We had good time, you know. S, when they go to Walmart, they park their car, making sure when they open the door, it doesn't touch the other car, so they don't make any marks. And, 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 and they park far so that the, the moms can park closer to the store. And when they go by, can I help you? They help other people carry their stuff. They're nice people, okay? And, and, and they go and they make sure, excuse me, you, would you like help? Can I help you? Stuff like this. They get things. They're very nice with the, with the cashier. They wait for the cashier to take their time. They check out and they leave. See, they come, they're not happy at all. These people are parking wrong and parking over the lines. And they should have brains and they should have like common sense. And this is very dangerous. So they park very far away so nobody touches their car. And, you know, they're safe away from all these people who are not organized and crazy people. And they walk in a straight line. See what's the closest line to Walmart. They go there and walk and you know i know exactly where i need to go maybe go this way that way they go to the shelf and of course they're very very unhappy of the you know lack of organization there and things are not in the right place okay and when they pick up their stuff they take it to the cashier and they say i found this in the dollar section is it a dollar or 99 cents depending on the cashier if she's a d what's your problem <laughs> if she's an I, eh, it's okay, no problem, whatever you like. If it's an S, you know, uh, I hope that's not bothering you. Are, are you okay? It doesn't matter. If you want to pay 99, it's fine. A dollar is fine. You know, just I want you to be happy. And the C, of course, they need to get the one cent back. Okay. And, you know, they need to leave. 
um, how the four say sorry. The D, sorry. I said sorry. The I, I'm sorry. You still like me? You still like me? <laughs> the S, I'm really, really, really sorry. I hope you're not hurt by what I did. And the C, they're never going to say sorry. <laughs> They're always correct. <laughs> we have a mix of all of those. Okay? This is a test. You can do a test and know exactly what you scored. This is what I scored. I scored 100% in S and over 90% in C and 30% in I. By the way, this is green. Believe it or not, and this is yellow. <laughs> Seriously, I don't know how it came like this. Okay, uh, so this is my natural style. My adapted style is as the S, and that's the C, and then you know the the I, and the D. You know, adapting according to the personality. So we have a max. If you look at this. So my main personality is mainly S, and second is C. Everybody has a main one and a secondary one. The main one is usually high, you know, and the secondary one is a little bit less. Um, this is something very important. Uh, smart companies, they have people do this before they join their company. So they know exactly where to put them. And, you know, people do this uh, sometimes in, in premarital counseling, stuff like this, to learn how to work uh, around people and in teams and stuff like this. Um, if you want, maybe you can send the question to the LLask at stmarkdc.org, and we can give you a couple of options. You have two questions? Okay. Um, you can uh, submit a question if you want to do the test and maybe we can tell you if, if you want to do it free there's something free but it's not as accurate if you want to pay a little bit more money to do this and I encourage actually couples to do that you can also do it if you have a hard time with your children you know you can definitely have them uh, take this uh, test does anyone bring over the questions now can okay. I just read them to you sure uh, the first one says, can you take on different personalities in different situations with different people? Yes. Yes, you can definitely take different personalities at different situations with different people. For example, as you see that my D is very, very low. But a lot of times I'm, I'm in a position that I have to make decisions. And sometimes I need to be rough. Even though... It's 100% against my nature. I would kill myself before hurting someone else. Not because I'm nice, but because I'm born that way. Something that I have nothing to do with. But sometimes I have to take an action. So I get all my energy to make a small decision. You know what I mean? When I have a big decision, oh my goodness, that's, that's killing. But... I have to do that and I have to adapt that. Yes. Second. Which types of people go best together? Which types of people are? That go best together, like C's and D's go better with I's and C's? That's or? next time, if we have a next time. <laughs> Actually, next time is the, is, is, is the Super Bowl, right? Next Sunday? Next Sunday Super Bowl Sunday. Yes. So Abun Anthony is going to talk to you because it's Super Bowl. We have to have Abun Anthony talk about Super Bowl. So maybe the time after that, I'm going to tell you about how different personalities work together with each other and what to do with different people and take it also the spiritual way, how God actually deals with us the same way. How God actually deals with us according to our personalities. Okay? Let's stand up for prayer.